Diversity is the mix. Ooh. And inclusion is making the mix work. Who here thinks that we need to improve on our diversity and inclusion in the games industry? Lovely. This is not a talk on defining diversity and inclusion, and um, nor to convince you that we need diversity and inclusion in the game industry. I'd refer you to the GDC vault or ask the neighbor who raised their hands. What this talk is one studio's how for starting a DNI. This will be a comprehensive talk, and I will use all my 30 minutes. Questions will be answered after the talk across this hall, and I would appreciate you filling out an edu the evaluation form. I'm sure you've heard that already. <laughs> this talk is about sharing the DNI journey of Avalanche Studios New York from 2016 to 2018. I will share lessons we learn, challenges we continue to face, best practices we discovered, and successes we've had. This is intended to be a starter kit for you to have a sustainable and active DNI initiative in your company, like we did in, New York, in the New York studio. Since this is a grassroots initiative, this talk is specific to the New York studio. In this talk, I won't offer any shortcuts, nor magic pill or bullets. It's not to vilify white males who are still the majority of this industry, Rather, this highlights the importance of white males to be an active ally in this DNI journey. There's a lot of heart required to starting a DNI initiative. Before embarking on this journey, find out what's your with them, your what's in it for me, your why for doing DNI. It could be global competitiveness, increasing your bottom line, being an ally and advocate avoiding lawsuits and bad publicity, or like me, you've been unlucky in the lottery of birth and would like to make things better for you and others who are also marginalized. My whiffim is this. I grew up thinking that discrimination is just a part of life and that you don't have a choice but to accept that those who are fair-skinned, rich, tall, and white are, get all the opportunities in the world and those that are not are just unlucky. I grew up in the Philippines, bo born and raised in the Philippines, and uh, at a young age, I've seen the inequality of life. I moved to Singapore and was treated like a second class because of my color, which is brown. I moved to the US, and I'm an immigrant, and I experienced the microaggressions, but it was only here that I got woke. I could actually try to do something about the inequality and make things better for me and folks like me. Heads up, not everything that I'll share today may be applicable to your team. However, the answer is within your team. It'll make you ask questions after this. I am incredibly excited to be here and share with you our ongoing journey with DNI. The more we explore, the more we find out that there's still a lot of work to be done. We are a work in progress. Here's some background on Avalanche Studios. The company was founded in Stockholm, Sweden 15 years ago. New York is the only studio outside of Sweden and opened in 2011. Avalanche Studios developed Mad Max, the Just Cause series, the Hunter series, Rage 2, and Generation Zero. I was hired for Avalanche Studios three years ago, and I, I was ecstatic that part of my marching orders was to do something about DNI. Like most small to medium video game companies, it's a struggle to have time, budget, and resources. DNI is like, oh, that's nice, but nobody really gives time and prioritizes it, so it easily gets deprioritized. I am an HR department of one, of a AAA studio, so I too have an alibi of being swamped. So in 2016, I kickstarted our DNI initiative by hiring an external trainer to teach us about DNI. Unfortunately, the training was not satisfactory. For the one day event, we were grouped and asked to complete tasks around New York City. Draw on the street, duct tape a tree, copy a tattoo of a stranger, eat something we haven't eaten before at Chinatown, 
invade a store to take a picture, climb to a rooftop to take a picture. It was funny when we were doing it, but the training ended and we realized we didn't learn anything about DNI. <laughs> I felt personally responsible for that failed training. We did get some of our money back. The harder part was to gain the trust of employees that they will not be misled again. It was fun because it turned out to be a team bonding. Again, we didn't learn anything about DNI. <laughs> this is not to discredit external trainers. A failed training is actually common, according to the Society of Diversity, where I recently got certified to be a diversity pr practitioner. Why? The training it, trainings are the go-to for starting a DNI initiative, and it almost always fails because it tries to address a huge and complicated topic, which is DNI, in a one-day event. The more fatal reason why DNI training fails is most companies just stop any initiative after a failed training. So, the overarching lesson for starting a DNI initiative is slow and consistent steps. So like this baby, they eat, they have milk first before they move on to solid food. My first immediate lesson for when I started in 2016 after the v that DNI failed training is Humility partnered with curiosity. Humility to accept that this is not a problem that can be solved by one person alone. And curiosity to start asking questions of what will. So I did one-on-ones, did one -on -one, Google form surveys, focus groups to find out what our employees need, what are the pressing issues, and what are the long-term goals. The second lesson is commitment to transform by the leadership. This is done through creating and modeling a psychologically safe environment where people are comfortable to give feedback. I'm gonna say it again, comfortable to give feedback. We haven't perfected this and this is a never ending effort. A few steps that we started were we updated the handbook, communicated the updates to our employees, called out behavior through one-on-ones -on -ones that do not support this initiative, and leadership also started imp implementing changes suggested by employees. The third lesson is establishing internal and external partners. After admitting that the first attempt was a failure, I partnered with the leadership team, our employees, and specific external groups to boost our agenda. I'll give examples in the next slides. The second overarching lesson is diversity and inclusion go hand in hand. One cannot work without the other. So you can't just hire a bunch of diverse folks and say, good luck, uh, because they will not thrive. So our two goals are foster inclusivity in the company and increase diversity representation in the demographics of our employee. So what are our actions to foster inclusivity? If I could sub sum it up in one word, it's called it's partnership or creating partnership. We have three ongoing internal partners. Number one is the full support of a leadership who listens. Having DNI considered in our events was a good start. For example, in representing the company externally, one small easy step is to make sure that there's diversity in the representatives we send out. In video game development, the industry is notoriously known for crunch. You don't like crunch too, right? Or overtime? No? Admittedly, this is a little easier for us because the company already is established to be a huge advocate of work-life balance. We have seven weeks of paid time off and our health, dental, vision insurances are 100% paid by the company for employee plus dependents, including domestic partners. Updating policies are also vital. An easy win for us was changing one of our company paid holidays, Good Friday holiday, which is a holiday for Christians uh, to a floating holiday so that others who don't observe Lent can observe their own holidays. Establishing our business resource group, or BRG, is the heart of our DNI team. How did we start the team? I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one to those who emailed me and spoke to me about the failed training. I asked them if they were willing to do voluntary work for DNI. Employees who get it and want to do something about it. Instructions were a project will remain a priority. 
We will meet two to three times a month, and we would plan for activities. They will not be policing employees. We started out with eight volunteers and three studio management. As time went on, there were attrition and addition within the team. I would like you to be mindful of the word diversity fatigue. It is a real issue where people get tired and impatient to see immediate changes. As of this writing, there are six DNI team members. I'm giving a shout out to our remaining OGs. Third and important partners are every one of us, or employees, who turn out to be our allies, creating awareness for ourselves and employees about microaggressions, educating employees of interruptions during meetings and discussions, and implementing zero tolerance for harassment, plus educating them on how to be an ally, foster an environment ready for more diversity. I heard a comment today on if you're a white male and you want to be an ally, what do you do? ask that question to the person you want to be an ally to. In 2017, we started partnering with the following external allies, the academia, nonprofit organizations, and lo local New York groups. We've hired incredible tal talents from our partner universities. These employees also help out with school outreach. Since there are not a lot of guides and materials out there to help us make DNI work, partnering with nonprofit organizations have been extremely helpful to our cause. Tapping on their specialities are vital and time plus cost efficient for us. Lastly, our local New York video game groups. New York is home to talented indie game developers. Our being at events show our support and oneness. We provide resources through talks by our developers, and we also share our expertise. It has been a struggle and a balancing act to find thoughtful activities that make our DNI initiative sustainable and efficient. A few of our favorite and successful activities are awareness activities. These are high impact, educational, and the cost is minimal. Here are some examples. Round tables are made of a, of a panel. They are volunteers, depending on the topic, who have stories to tell and there's a moderator. We've had good success with our round tables, but they require a lot of preparation. One learning experience from, for me from a round table is I, had, I have an employee who I have difficulty talking to because at times he has difficulty understanding. At that round table, he shared that Spanish is his second language, and he felt really bad that his parents didn't speak English, that he wished that they did so that he won't be in this predicament. Him having shared that really helped me in terms of communicating with him. The next one is documentaries. These are easy and high ha have high impact. We choose a documentary that's based on a monthly theme. Newsletters are a collection of research on a topic that we would like for our employees to know. Based on feedback, we hired a trainer again, geared to empowering women and the marginalized. This time it was useful because it was targeted and it was specific. More importantly, our conversations are the soul of our DNI initiatives. From management, making sure all issues and concerns are listened to and resolved as much as we can. For employees, encar encouraging difficult conversations help foster a good working relationship with their coworkers. Two key things to maintain an active DNI initiatives are planning a monthly theme as focus for the DNI initiatives. This helps immensely since the DNI team all have full-time jobs in the company. Next is sending a feedback form through Google Form, that's free, after every event to know real time if the activity was effective or not. I'm going to share and spend some time talking about our 2018 calendar so you would be able to picture what a DNI initiative may look like when you implement it. I will also share selected feedback from some activities 2018 uh, was our year two of our DNI journey. In January, our theme was global citizens. We have diversity and nationality being in New York, and a majority of us relocated from somewhere to work there. A roundtable activity was to understand the struggles, our differences, and challenges of relocating. We had four volunteers who are immig immigrants, relocators, and people who have worked abroad and they shared their personal stories and their struggles and their triumphs all to create awareness. My takeaway was 
those who have to get visas, especially in the US, have a lot to worry about versus someone who's local who don't have to worry about that on top of their work. In February, for Black History Month, we sent out a newsletter educating our employees on why in the US this is celebrated. We showed 13th, a Netflix documentary at a Bring Your Own Lunch, and had a debrief at a lunch the week after. This thought-provoking documentary analyzed the criminalization of African Americans and the US prison boom. In March, for Women's Month, we sent out a newsletter, watch the documentary Misrepresentation, a film showcasing the horrifying realities of female media representation. Video games as a form of media is powerful in influencing our audience. As creators, knowing the misrepresentation of women is useful for being mindful on what we create. We had four women as well who participated uh, from Avalanche Studios at an external event in New York, and a lot were happily surprised that, wow, there are women in Avalanche Studios? Also, the women in the company started Ladies Who Pastry. It's a, it's a half an hour get together bi weekly of ladies to fika and chat. Fika is a Swedish tradition of a short break or downtime with coffee or snacks. In April, for Spanish American Heritage Month, we taught our employees how to say the correct pronunciation of the Spanish words in our game. Just Cause 4 is set in South America. For May, we sent out a newsletter on Asian Pacific Heritage Month. One of my favorite activities is the Privilege Walk. You can search this on YouTube. I think it's the best way to talk about privilege without going into semantics, but just share personal stories. So there are 35 questions. All of you start in one line, and depending on the question, you either step forward or step back. And the uh, discussions after that was just priceless. Another thing that uh, happened in May came from the feedback we got from women which was the need for a training for respect in the workplace and assertiveness. This was in the height of the Me Too movement, and aside from enforcing a zero tolerance in the workplace, we got a trainer to equip the women and marginalized with skills to face this issue. My personal takeaway from this is that as women and, and minorities, we tend to say sorry way too many times. So at times, just avoid saying sorry and say excuse me. Like, sorry, I got this room book, just say, excuse me, I have this room book. It, it, it improves our assertiveness. In June, for Pride Month, we had the round table where some LGBTQ plus employees volunteered to share their stories. Our goal was to normalize LGBTQ plus, and hearing a familiar person's story was vital to this goal. Their comfort in coming out showed that they trust the organization and that they felt that they have coworkers who are ready to listen. We, want, we went on a three-month hiatus. In July, our studio closed for two weeks for our summer break tradition. August and September, we were extremely busy finishing the game. We restarted in October for in Indigenous Peoples Month. We had a presentation at the company meeting on what, what and who are the Indigenous people. We mindfully look for ways to link our initiatives to be industry specific. Again, info is not readily available. So for Indigenous Peoples Month, we looked for games that have Native Americans as protagonists and we uh, made it available for employees to play during their break. Our final activity for 2018 was disability in games and we partnered with the nonprofit organization Able Gamers to educate us on what we can do as developers to make games that are more accommodating to disabled players. They helped design the uh, new Xbox adaptive controller. We invited them to our studio in New York and we also hosted an event where we opened our studio to external folks so that they can spread the message of enhancing the disabled player experience so more people can play. New York recently passed a law to require an interactive preventing harassment training for all employees. We achieved 100% compliance and this educated our employees on preventing harassment. I believe that laws can help the DNI initiative in that, for instance, you, when you're requesting for more budget, if it's for compliance issue or purposes, then um, the budget is easy to get. The other New York law that I like a lot is making it illegal to ask candidates their current salary. This way, employers just pay the market and not a previous salary, which historically is lower for women and minorities. And that was our 2018 calendar. <laughs> Thank you.
I wasn't expecting that. But you think you can do one activity from that list? Good. Our second goal was to improve our diversity hires. Improving our diversity numbers in the company is all good for creative creativity. A common thing to hear from naysayers, though, is that they're colorblind and that DNI is not a problem. And think that we lower the quality of hires when we start diversity hiring. Diversity hiring, however, is just to create a level playing field for all, not empowering some while disenfranchising others. It is just casting a wider net and still hire the best out of that pool. To cast a wider net, one of the first few things we reviewed were our initiatives in sourcing and recruiting. First, I conducted an internal interviewer's training with tools and best practices for interviewing. Making hiring managers aware of their biases was a goal of the training. Interviewers are instructed to focus on competencies and potential of a candidate versus hiring how they normally used to, which is usually hiring someone who looks like them and are like them. To expect change, we must change our interviewing habits. Second is better sourcing process. There's data to prove that updating the job descri descriptions to be gender neutral, providing a description of what the role is, versus itemizing required qualifications increases the likelihood that females would apply. Best practices include avoiding ninja or bro language and painting a culture of just always partying and drinking. Discovering new job sites to post our jobs that would have different reach was another thing we did. We also increased our referral bonus. We saved on recruitment fees and got quality candidates from referrals. Third, we are aware that the first thing that candidates look at specifically in the US to find out about the company is Glassdoor. They are known as the quote unquote enemy of the company, most companies. We partnered with them instead to make sure that information on Glassdoor about Avalanche Studios is accurate. A few of easy updates are correcting what our benefits are and sharing our activities and news. Candidates find out about our commitment to work-life balance, and this is attractive to women and those with families. We continue to work on what needs improvement based on reviews and increase our engagement by replying to reviews, good or bad. The next two actions are for long-term results. We increased our studio visits. We accommodated requests for more schools and students to come to the studio, meet and greet the developers, and know that making, a video, making video games is a real job that they can have. Same goal of take your kids to work day on a grander scale. The visit includes basic information on what are the different roles that they can be on a AAA project, and the tools or software that they can start learning and enhancing. It is heartwarming to inspire and motivate young, underprivileged, diverse kids to pursue their passion in video games. We believe that we can have a more diverse pool of candidates in the future when we start educating a more diverse group of youngsters that video game making is a wonderful possibility and career for everyone. Just two weeks ago, there were 10-year-olds who come to the studio who want to learn programming, and it blew my mind because their questions are about C++, and I'm like, what did I do when I was 10? <laughs> Fifth, we extended our reach to minorities and marginalized groups by being present at their events. Examples are Game Devs of Color Expo, Play NYC, Able Gamers, New York City Video Game Critics Circle, and Animation Project. We have improved our number of hits and minimized our misses in our activities as time goes on. I would like you to be aware and learn from our challenges as well. The main thing is there are not a lot of materials out there, nor guides to help us. Knowing what works for your demographics is the most important part. And knowing comes from conversations, surveys, asking questions, being curious. Don't be afraid to look dumb. We often have production schedule conflict because we have a game to finish. The DNI team has to be mindful of that when planning for activities. In the beginning of this talk, I shared that DNI requires a lot of heart. There will be discouragements from others, primarily because of their hardwired biases. And thoughtfully looking for activities is taxing because we, won't, we don't want to alienate others who are not yet our allies. We are restricted with not having the biggest budget in the world to do grander things. And we've also experienced members of our DNI team leave, and since it's a voluntary work, we don't hold them back and it's never easy. It is hard work, 
time consuming, but I'm proud to share with you that this is one of the most fulfilling initiatives I've been fortunate to be a part of and I've learned so much. I'm happy to report that in two years, our different activities and partnerships resulted into the following. We have nearly doubled our women hires. Our active and sustainable DNI initiatives made noticeable impact to the lives of all employees, especially the marginalized. By just casting a wider net, we've hired our first woman programmer, promoted from within a woman to senior producer. We hired interns where three out of four were women. One of the women got hired as a full-time employee. Our retention rates for women has also been very high. True story. We were having our Coney Island trip in June, and one of the high-tech companies, their, their names may have book and face in it, and they challenged us to a tug of war. They lost the first round and asked for a redo, asking for more women from our team. We still won the second round, but I'm more happy that we have more than enough women to even participate in a tug of war. We also have increased our people of color hires to have. Our activities have fostered a, a comfortable environment for employees to give feedback as to what we can improve in our games. One African-American employee suggested to change the name of one of our characters because the original name was offensive to African-Americans. A Hispanic employee suggested the initiative to teach our employee how to pronounce the Spanish words in our game correctly. This same comfortable envir environment led to LGBTQ plus employees saying that they're comfortable to be themselves and comfortable coming out. I haven't even mentioned the many ripple effect that we've had to everyone since we started. The bright ideas that come from our employees and connections we've made are priceless. These are tangible changes that fuel our efforts. 2019 and onwards, we would like to continue on the journey to the ultimate goal of DNI affecting our games. If you could only take three takeaways from today, here's a summary of what you can bring back to your organizations depending on your role immediately when you get back next week or unless you're on vacation next week. For those in management, humility is the way for DNI to start. Without your support, DNI will not fly. Remain curious as to what would make your organizations better. Listen and commit to transform. For the content developers and creators, you are the most important part of the equation. You are most needed to be an ally. If you don't know how, ask. Keep the feedback loop by continuing to care and advocate for equity and equality. To my fellow HR, our people business needs a lot of heart. Our best ammunition is creating awareness, exercising compassion, and continue dialogue with our stakeholders. Easier said than done? Yeah. Worth it? It will be. Why am I, why am I here today? I'm not an expert. I don't work for the perfect company. Newsflash, there's none out there. I haven't been working long in video games, and in this industry, it seems to matter. The probability of being lis listened to is directly proportional to how long you've been in games. Budget and resources are always scarce. I am here to share that in spite and despite of what we're up against, you can start an active and sustainable DNI initiative in your company. I hope you go back to work and implement ideas from the starter kit, no matter what your position is in the company. You can be part of the solution. It is an uphill battle, and some days are more challenging that it's easy to not do it. There are days when we step back two times and we make mistakes, or others we work with them. With others who we work with make it harder. There's a definite cost to doing nothing. With globalization and changing demographics, DNI is no longer a, oh, that's nice. It is a business strategy and that every company, whatever their size is, must have to be competitive. Bring this starter kit to someone who gets it and also wants to do something about it. This can't be done alone. Who will you share this starter kit to? Together, we can all be the change that we wish to see for improving DNI in games. Thanks for being here.